Hey, this is Matt with the Fitness Channel. We've got a presentation today on your energy systems. Starting off with our little mind map, we're going to be looking at a couple of different topics here. We will start discussing what this concept of adenosine triphosphate or ATP is. We'll define what that is, what it looks like and how it releases energy. And then what we'll figure out are our three main energy systems whose job is to resynthesize or recreate that ATP. Okay, so your human body has got one main source of energy and it is stored in the high energy bonds of something called adenosine triphosphate, ATP. So ATP looks like this. You've got an adenosine molecule and then attached onto that you've got one, two and three, hence the name triphosphate, and adenosine with three phosphates attached. If we're going to be super technical they're actually attached more like that and it's this one here which has got a high energy bond. So the way I try to imagine this is Imagining that you've got elastic bands and you've pulled the elastic band tight and as soon as you get rid of one of the phosphates, bang, energy is released. Quite glad that animation works so well. So the metaphor that you can use for this one or the analogy is to imagine ATP as a bomb. So you release one of those phos phosphate bonds and boom, you've got the bomb going off. So ATP, pull one of the P's away and boom, you've got the bomb going off. What you're then left with is a bomb which is a dud. Basically, it's been used as like a lit match. You can only light it once. The bomb's gone off. It's released its energy. What you then have to do is remake the bomb. And the bomb actually looks like this. So you've got a... How many have we got here? We've got one. We've got two. So at that point, it actually becomes adenosine diphosphate. So the spent bomb is called adenosine diphosphate. Now what your body has got are three main ways in which it will remake ATP. So you spend your bomb, you light your match, you then need to get a phosphate attached back on again so that you can remove it again to release more energy and that's what we refer to as the ATP cycle because you take ATP, turn it to a DP, release the energy, then you put the ATP, or you get the phosphate back on, remake ATP, that's the cycle. It's as simple as that, really. Now, what we're going to talk about now are the three, one, two, three, main ways that your body will resynthesize or remake that bomb, ATP. So the quickest way that your body is going to remake ATP is called the creatine phosphate system or the CP system or the PCR system. It's called different things to different people. The key thing is it involves creatine and phosphate. So within your muscles, so if you take your muscle, stored in the muscle, if we kind of zoom into it and have a little look, what you'll see are little stores of creatine and attached onto the creatine, you'll have a phosphate. Now what's happened is we've had ATP here, with this being the adenosine. We've gotten rid of one, so what we're left with, come on rubber, what we're left with is ADP. We essentially need to get this phosphate here and take it over there. So what happens in the creatine phosphate energy system is the stores of creatine phosphate which are in the muscles break this little bond here. This phosphate then travels neatly over to here, attaches on and then what we've basically remade, if I can get rid of that, is ATP. That's as simple as it works. So you have ADP, you need ATP, you've got a little phosphate sat over here, you need it, it goes over there, it remakes ATP. That is the creatine phosphate energy system. Now some things to know about the creatine phosphate energy system are that it is mega quick at releasing its energy. 
Now, stored within your muscles already, you've probably got around about four seconds of ATP. Is my spelling going good again? Three seconds of ATP stored in there. So let's imagine you're on a, a runway. Someone just released a dog and they're chasing you. Boom, off you go. You're running as fast as you can. After four seconds, your muscle stores of ATP are now at zero percent. Now, your body's not going to allow that to happen. So the first thing it'll do is start to replenish those stores. And the first place it'll turn to is the creatine phosphate energy system. So you're legging it down this runway. Your creatine phosphate energy system kind of gets switched on. Uh, this would be my switch. And the energy system starts releasing a load of its phosphates to remake its ATP. Now, you've probably got around about eight seconds maybe 10 seconds if you really train it hard of creatine phosphate stored in there so four seconds in this is then going to be the maximum creator of the energy by the way it's always on it's just sitting in the background not doing a great deal of, uh, of work so somewhere around about 12 seconds in anywhere up to 14 seconds in Creatine phosphate says, no, nah, I'm out. I can't. I can do no more here. I'm, uh, I'm done in. Now, a couple of interesting facts. If you wait for 30 seconds, then what you'll end up doing is replenishing 50%. So you've started legging it, and then you stop. 30 seconds later, 50% of your creatine's back stored again. If you wait for around about two to three minutes, depending, you'll get 100%. So if you're looking at doing some mad sprint intervals, what you're probably going to be looking at doing is giving it absolutely everything for maybe 15 seconds and then having a probably a two minute rest and then that will fully replenish your creatine phosphate so you can go all out in your next sprint. Now let's imagine we're still legging it down this runway and we're now 15, 20 seconds in. The dominant energy system now is going to be something called your lactic acid energy system. Now to keep this nice and simple, I just want you to imagine that your body has got like a little cauldron inside it. And what your body will do is it will take glucose, pop it, or sugar, pop it into this cauldron mix it up a little bit and it'll spit out ATP. Now there are byproducts of this one so if you imagine you kind of got some waste products seeping away as you make your ATP and the waste products for this one eventually get turned into lactic acid so there is a waste product to your lactic acid energy system and at the end it turns into lactic acid. At level 3 we'll find out a few steps before it turns into lactic acid. But for now you need to know that glucose goes in, gets mixed up, gets turned into or ATP, gets kicked out. And on the back of it you end up with lactic acid as a waste product. Now for this one you can get anywhere between 90 seconds, anywhere up to I suppose 3 minutes really if you train it hard. And then you'll end up kind of knackered, basically. So your lactic acid energy system will produce a great deal of energy really quickly. Now your lactic acid energy system and your creatine phosphate energy system at no point have used any of this. So we refer to both of those as anaerobic. So they're your anaerobic energy systems. Always running in the background, you've got your next system, which does have oxygen running in, but your lactic acid energy system and your creatine phosphate energy system do not use it. Now, the one that's working most of the time, probably 90% of your energy is going to be coming out of the aerobic energy system. Now, your aerobic energy system all happens inside your mitochondria. Your mitochondria probably looks a bit like a hot dog when you look at it in kind of textbooks. So you've got your mitochondria, which is actually spelt chondria, which I've spelt first time, amazingly. We'll take space in your mitochondria and it's going to use a number of different ingredients for this one. So it'll either be using sugars, which we 
you can call carbohydrates because that's how we consume them. It can be using fats in the form of fatty acids. And in certain cases, although it's not really a preferred store, it can use a variant of protein. What happens is these macronutrients go into the mitochondria loads of good stuff happens in there which ain't going to get covered in this presentation good stuff happens in the mitochondria and it will chuck out at your atp so you've got your atp coming out now this one has a couple of other waste products as the hydrogen builds up because we've got oxygen involved in this one you take two hydrogens and one oxygen and you end up with h2o so you have water as a waste product when the carbon starts to build up in this one, you link it in with the oxygen, you end up with CO2. Nice and easy to send that off to the lungs to be breathed out. You also have a little bit of heat. So the waste products of the aerobic energy system are going to be water, carbon dioxide and heat. Now this one is unlimited. As long as you've got your basic ingredients, the aerobic energy system will carry on forever. Unlimited and it does have a limit so it's got a limit as to how fast it can release its energy and when we start discussing in level three the thresholds and how hard we can work these systems you'll understand that a little bit more so let's go through that mind map again our final one we have described what atp is that store of energy within the body releasing one of those phosphates uh, from its high energy bond releases the energy once it's done it's like a spent match you then need to remake the atp in order to have the stored energy again and we have got one two three main energy systems which are going to be uh, reproducing that atp creatine phosphate and the lactic acid energy system do not use oxygen so are anaerobic whereas the aerobic energy system clues in the name uses oxygen so it is aerobic Hope that's helped. I look forward to seeing you on another one.